You're listening to the Just Go Bike Podcast. We're all about the culture of bicycling just for the fun of it. Your host, Kathy Murphy from the Morphology Podcast and Andrea Parrott from Parrot Talk are joined by a wide variety of guests each week that delve into the social side of cycling. With tales from Ragbri Nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. And now, here are your hosts, Murph. Hey, that's me. And AP. And that's me. Hi, Murph. Hey there, AP. How's it going? Oh, fantastic. And how are you? I am good. And I just made the realization we have not addressed the fabulous new intro and outro that we have here on the Just Go Bike podcast. Ah, yes. Fabulous indeed. We wanted to give the pod a little bit of a facelift as we went into 2024, just to freshen things up a little bit. Yes, indeed. So we had a near and dear friend sit down with us to record, and it was so much fun. Yeah, we had a blast. Uh, I think you could hear me giggling throughout the whole building of Ragbright HQ. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you might recognize his voice. In fact, a couple of people have heard the intro and outro and tried to guess who it is. Yeah. Um, guarantee you may know he has been interviewed on the podcast a couple times and I'm sure he'll be interviewed again in the future because he's a notable. Yep. Um, if you ride Ragbri, you've probably seen him on Ragbri or at least recognize his beard. It's Pumpkin. It is Pumpkin, also known as Jason Pierce. And his family owns a huge pumpkin farm, which you and I have been to a couple times. Mm -hmm. And I assume... That's how he got his nickname of Pumpkin, but uh, maybe I don't know. Do you assume? I believe I believe that is true. Uh, the p- pumpkin patch is called Pierce's Pumpkin Patch, and it's by Sheraton, Iowa. And you'll know it when you drive by the World War II plane that sits out front. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, but I wondered if maybe everyone in his family also has the nickname Pumpkin, but I think it's just <laughs> Jason, right? <laughs> I think it is just. There's only one Pumpkin, right? So, well, we had so much fun recording it. Uh, we we're so happy with how it turned out. Our very own, like, Price is Right announcer. Yeah. And I just, I, every time I listen, I love it. And there's even more clips that we'll use as go, we go down the road towards Ragbri. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And um, something I would love to do someday is to do an episode of all the bloopers. <laughs> like, add all the bloopers from me and you and then from Pumpkin. Although I think we might be the only one, or maybe me, I might be the only one entertained by it. <laughs> well, most of the bloopers are me, so yeah. <laughs> but no, there's some great bloopers. I think those may have to see the light of day at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, Pumpkin has an excellent singing, singing voice, so. Yes, which that did make the cutting room floor him singing <laughs> that I I think he was singing a song and I secretly pushed record. And then at the very end of the song, he goes, and I saw you push record. So he knew it. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, that one might end up on the, on the blooper reel. Oh, I love it. All right. So we hope you like the addition of Pumpkin's voice as much as we do. Um, and if you, I guess if you don't, don't let us know. <laughs> <laughs> or let us know. I don't know. We Either way. But anyway, yeah. Thank you, Pumpkin, for doing it. And speaking of thanks, a while back, do you remember when we were talking about the Wright Brothers and how they had a bike shop? Y- yes. And we asked listeners, you know, to tell us if the bike shop was still around. Yeah, we did. And I want to give out a shout out to Mark and Kate, who both wrote in. Uh, Mark said that the Wright brothers had several successive bike shops. One of their bike shops was reconstructed, and you can actually go tour it in Dayton, Ohio. So that's kind of cool. I mean, I don't go to Ohio a lot. But if I did, I'd want to check that place out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then Kate also wrote in and she said, I am happy to say that you can see it at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. So we've got two different places that we probably need to go check out to see the Wright Brothers Bike Shop. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I think I went to a wedding at the Henry Ford Museum, but I only saw a ton of cars. I must have been looking. I didn't see the whole museum. <laughs> oh, interesting. But it's a cool, yeah, that is a cool place. I can say that for sure. Yeah. So. And, and I definitely have biking in Michigan on my bike it list for this year, 2024. So I'll have to make sure that when I you know, map my route or figure out where we're going to go, that Dearborn is part of that. So I can stop and see this museum. 
yeah. So if you do go up there, you got to give my friend Andrea, my other friend Andrea, a shout out. So, hey, what's up, Andrea? <laughs> All right. But thank you. No, seriously, though, thank you to both Mark and Kate for the emails. Um, and speaking of shout outs, the Coach Earl training plan is out. Oh, my goodness. This is exciting because this means, you know, Ragbri is going to be here before you know it. So um, I saw, I went online and I saw that he has a plan that you can actually print out, hang mm-hmm. on your fridge or wherever it is that you will, you know, keep your eye on it and be able to log your miles. And yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was also going to say his plan starts out at just 20 miles of riding per week, and it obviously progresses, but he has it starting the week of February 12th, which if you're listening to this, you know, for the first time while, uh, right when we posted it, it, that means this week it starts. And I added up each week and it ends up being over 1,600 miles of training. Ooh, that seems like a lot, but I guess I, I haven't added it up in the past. Yeah, well, it's just meant to be a guide, and it's meant to get you started from zero. So you really got to get those miles in. I mean, you got to get that time on the bike in, and it's just sort of a generic guide that it might or might not fit your schedule or riding ability, but, um, yeah, it's just more for the novice rider, and it's just maybe for those experienced riders who need to get a push to get their miles in. Yeah. Um, But, you know, sometimes people have no idea how many miles to train. For me, that would be more than I would need, but I'm also comfortable comfortable going fairly slowly um but i'm not that slow you know so i don't know it just it's a guide yeah it's simply a guide like i i will do well over 1600 miles before rag bri but that's just Mm -hmm. the nature of how i live my life i guess but (laughs) and i do know you know we've got the the steepest rag bri you know on record which we already know all that we've talked about it before and we've talked to matt fippen but coach ertel will be posting additional blogs with additional types of training to help us all with those extra hills that we will be facing this year yeah spoiler alert you're gonna need some hill training or a reasonable facsimile thereof. However that means to you, I know some people live in very flat areas of the country. You may need to take a day trip to go do hills or way down your bike or ride into headwinds or whatever that means to you to practice hills, but you're going to have to do that. So the main key with this plan and with any plan that you're using to train for Rag Bright is to get a bunch of saddle time to build up your endurance and start sooner than later. Yeah, that's for sure. And will you tell listeners where they can go to find the Coach Hurdle plan? Yes, I sure can. You go to ragbri.com and then under the menu option that says the ride, there's a little training section and it's got it all right there. And Coach Hurdle, when he sends us the route or the training plan, he sends us both the PDF and an Excel doc. So if you want to just print it out, you can use the PDF. But if you want to go through and actually enter in your mileage day by day, you can use that Excel doc. Sweet. And there's no charge for that. So you can there is no charge. get the training plan and start, you know, in 20 miles to some people might be like really aggressive. So that means for sure, get your booty on a saddle and start pedaling now. Um, you know, whether for other people, 20 miles might be one ride or it might be split into three rides or yeah. maybe you're somebody who every night you turn on the TV and you jump on your trainer and ride for half an hour. So whatever... Um, You know, just keep in mind that Coach Ertl has a lot of knowledge about training, and he also um, knows that it's meant to be just a guide. Yeah, if you go to those links on the RAGBRAI website, there is an archive of all the different blogs that Coach Ertl has written since 2009. Whoa. So if you want to get a little bit more context or a little bit more info, you can look back to any one of those blogs and just kind of read about bike training and how to get ready for RAGBRAI. Cool. All right. Well, let's get to today's episode. All right. So today we have Sabra Nagel from Ride the Rockies, along with Laura Rice, who Sabra is the ride director for Ride the Rockies, and Laura is our event ops manager. Mm -hmm. So they're on the pod today to take a bit of a deep dive into this year's Ride the Rockies route. Yes, I sat down with both of them when we were all together for the Ragbri route party weekend. And, um, It sounds like they have been pretty deep into traveling the route, visiting towns, having meetings, and all the planning that goes along with a week-long bike tour. Yeah, it's so interesting just to kind of hear behind the scenes. And if you haven't listened to the Ride the Rockies episode about 2024 registration, that'd be a good one to listen to along with this one. 
Yes, I will link that episode to the show notes. And one note, when we recorded this episode in the lobby of the hotel, you're probably going to notice some background noise, something that we couldn't control. So uh, sorry about that, but now we've acknowledged it. So when you hear it, you just have to like put it in the back of your brain. So let's take a listen. All right. Well, I would like to welcome back Sabra Nagel. How are you, Sabra? I'm doing great. Good. And this is awesome because we actually get to be face to face for this interview. Because I think last time you were on the podcast, you were far, far away and we did it over the phone. Yeah. Yeah. We've always done it over the phone. So this is a little freaky for me. Yeah. And speaking of far, far away, you are just getting back from the beautiful island of Hawaii and Kauai, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was nice. It was a nice break to get away for a bit. Yeah. Now, Ride the Rockies is going to be going full bore. Full bore, yeah. And the reason that we get to be here in person is because you came to Iowa um, to be part of the RAGBRAI route announcement party. And, like, what was the vibe like for you last night? It was really fun. I love coming to the RAGBRAI vibe announcement party. It just really pumps me up for my event yeah, our event the yeah. ride the rockies and um and it's just great to see such a diverse population of riders you know every state you go in has a different type of rider and i was very unique right right and as andrea and andrea and i were talking about in the intro you are the uh, the ride director for ride the rockies and this is your second year with them right yes it is my first i've been with the event just a little over a year so okay um, okay this is this is really the anticipation this year is fantastic yeah. last year it was mostly full terror <laughs> <laughs> well we're glad that you're back and and you're on the podcast today to get a little bit deeper into the route and just to talk about ride the rockies and maybe get a little bit of hype going but first let's introduce our other guest that we have and i'll let you introduce her awesome well i'm very excited to introduce uh the new events ops manager for ride the rockies laura rice she joined us about three weeks ago and um has been a fantastic addition she's dove right in met the crew started working on logistics investigated all the towns so she's gonna just make ride the rockies fantastic this year she's gonna be such a great addition to the team wow laura that is quite an introduction <laughs> know, no pressure how are you <laughs> i am good good I'm excited and, to be here and um i think i said that we're in iowa so we're in des moines and you said this is your first time in iowa it is so wow. i get to check off another state yeah and we were lucky enough a couple of days ago to do an indoor bike ride together um, on Zwift, which Andrea and I have talked about Zwift many times, but that was super fun. It was. I mean, so that was the, you know, RAGBRAI route announcement pre-ride Saturday morning. Uh, so it was really fun to do a virtual ride in person <laughs> uh, and just be a part of that experience. I mean, anytime you get to pedal your bike is a good time, whether it's inside or outside. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys do part of the course when you Zwifted? Or uh, just... Matt picked the course, okay. so it was a completely random Watopia course so oh, okay. it was fun and there were over a hundred riders so that was pretty cool it is pretty yeah cool. yeah okay so let's get into ride the Rockies specifically and I absolutely love this event um, for two reasons because a it's Colorado scenery amazing and then B I get to be part of it as part of the crew so I get to see like um, you know, the writer's perspective, but then also what happens behind the scenes. So I'm excited to be part of your crew again this year. Cannot wait. But before we get into like some details on the route, will you maybe Sabra, why don't you explain to the listeners kind of like the elevator speech on what Ride the Rockies is? Oh, I've never been good at elevator speech. No. <laughs> you can um, you can make it longer than 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, Ride the Rockies is, this will be the 38th year, so it is an institution in the state of Colorado. Um, and it was, it it's just a ride every year, it changes. Um, just like Rag Bri, we pick new towns, we pick new areas, we pick new scenery, and ride somewhere between hopefully uh, just under to 
up to 500 miles over six days um, and gain elevation gains of at least 24,000 um, and just show off parts of the state. So it's a great event, not only because of the riders, but it's also very much a community event. So um, it brings people into towns that maybe they wouldn't visit if they weren't Coloradans and um, just really showcases the state of Colorado and the Rocky Mountains. And um, there's a lot of similarities to RAGBRAI with Ride the Rockies, but um, I think it's a little bit more of an aggressive ride. And I would say that just because I'm an Iowan and, you know, we're used to, well, you're an Iowan as well. Mm -hmm. So we're used to the up and downs of, uh, I call them rollers. I don't know what right. you call them, but the up and downs, up and downs. But when you do ride the Rockies, it's typically, it could be similar elevation or more elevation, but it's usually one massive climb. Mm -hmm. So with that said, do you think like your average ragbri rider could do ride the Rockies? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I think the average ragbri rider would come do Ride the Rockies and think, God, that was easy. <laughs> um, it, it sounds intimidating. You know, you're in the mountains and you're going to be doing maybe 24,000 miles of elevation gain over the six days. But it's all pretty much an even incline. It's an even grade. So, you know, and, and rarely is it over three, four, five percent because it's, you know, when they build highways, they build highways on the grade. Um, and so, yeah, I, whereas I call uh, the rollers in Iowa the, the ones that will rip your legs off because it's unrelenting. <laughs> yeah, you yes. climb up, you go down. You climb up, you go down, and you'll do it all day long. Um, once you get to the top of my climbs at Ride the Rockies, all you got to do is sit. And we have one day where I don't think there's any uphill at all. It's just a really nice, relaxing wait for tomorrow downhill day oh and wow so i think that um i think people would be pleasantly surprised at how easy it is to ride in the mountains excellent good well uh, tell us where ride the rockies kicks off what community or what town it's really exciting so we're calling this the old west ride the rockies this old year west. old west because we are starting in steamboat springs which is a ski town, but it's also Bike Town USA as far as they're concerned. They have a huge bike culture in Steamboat Springs, lots of gravel, lots of road. I think the little town has like seven bike shops. So, um, so that's our kickoff this year, and um, it should be it should be really a fun location for people. I encourage people to come in early so they can just ride around the community. They've got, uh, if you visit Steamboat Springs website, they've got different rides that they suggest people take and uh, get to know the community. They've got great bike trails along trails along the Yampa River um, that will just help you get acclimated, help you get used to the altitude. And it's a small, it's a lower town, so it's around 6,200 feet. So it's a great place to begin. Which, you know, I guess if you're a Coloridian, would you say Coloridian? Colo Colorado. Colorado. Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to edit all of those out. <laughs> if you're a resident of Colorado, over 6,000 feet is kind of like, well, oh, it's just your average, where I live at 700 feet. So that would still be, that's higher than Denver. Yeah. But, yeah. but Steamboat Springs, like when I think of Steamboat Springs, I think of skiing and fun and you know all the winter activity but it's cool to know that it's an amazing place for the bicycle as well yeah no it really is and they have you know they have really good summer activities not only cycling they have one of the best alpine coasters in the united states um you know chairlifts up to the top of the alpine coaster and then you it's their screaming rides down they're really fun <laughs> um and lots of hikes you know it's a great place to bring your family even if you're not a psych if you have non-cycling family members they will not be bored awesome well and i want to get into a few more of the communities but laura will you tell us like the average like sure. what sort of mileage are we talking about for the week as far as miles and elevation yeah, so it's just over 400 miles, give or take. There are a few days that have different options. So okay. A short day, long day. I think it new, new this year's the gravel options. Ooh, cool. Yeah, so people have been asking for that. So uh, one of the communities is really excited to take that on and provide that as an option. Um, so, you know, you're looking at at least uh, around 400 miles uh, with around 23,000 feet of 
elevation gain. Once again, depending on kind of pick your own adventure, you know, yeah. well, how are you feeling that day? What do you want to do? Do you want to go off the beaten path per se um, for the gravel enthusiast and yeah, explore a little something different? That's awesome. And what time of year does this ride take place? Yeah, so it's early June. Um, this year is June 9th through 15th, and the prologue kind of kicks thing off, kicks things off in Steamboat Springs for folks that want to come in and have that experience on the 8th and 9th. Um, so nice kind of good way to start the summer and yeah see Colorado as you know spring is coming in it's just it's absolutely beautiful any time of year but a little uh, extra yes. special then you get the contrast of both snow and and the greenery popping out yeah for sure and um we'll put in the show notes the previous episode we did with Peter and Erica but Peter really got into what the prologue is all about good and you guys are nailing it this year with the prologue and um, just a super quick recap, you know, in addition to the June 9th through the 15th Ride the Rockies, you can choose if you, you know, want some little VIP attention to uh, get a couple other days of riding and experiences in the area. Um, there's a different cost associated with that. But I mean, if you have the time and the money, it's it's going to be awesome. I hope I make it out for a part of the prologue, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to that dinner on Sunday night. I've been to that restaurant, and it is really good. I'm sure Peter couldn't stop talking about oh, it. And all he, <laughs> but his favorite thing I think he talked about was the mac and cheese, which was kind of funny to me. <laughs> but maybe that was just all he could remember at the time. I don't know. <laughs> I know uh, that's funny because I don't remember having mac, mac and, and cheese. cheese. <laughs> it was the Brussels, the Brussels sprout hash that we were all raving about. Oh, so. that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so we, we briefly spoke about Steamboat Springs. I want to know about some of the other communities. And, you know, you kind of hinted, Laura, about gravel options and choose your own adventure. So let's hear some more about the route. Um, so our second day, we're in Craig, Colorado. And Craig is, um, it's a town that's really grown in the last few years, I think. They have a branch of the Colorado Northwestern Community College there. So they have a pretty good population. They have about um i think they said just under two dozen restaurant different options there but the thing that i loved about craig was their history museum it it will blow your mind um they're very proud of it and you walk in and the first thing you see is this gigantic watercolor it's the world's largest watercolor oh wow or maybe the largest watercolor in the united states but it's it it is the whole back wall of this old um I think it's an old bank building and it is just beautiful of a cowboy on a horse um, and they also have a huge collection of, of gunslinger memorabilia oh, so cool. it's, <laughs> Craig is really interesting and really fun um, and we will be um, all of our HQ camping showers everything will be at the uh, Moffat County Fairgrounds there which is a great location because it's at the edge of town, but downtown is very close to walk into, ride into, however you want to get there. Um, so it's, it's a really nice venue and they're very excited about having us. So they'll have it set up really nice. And I see, I'm looking at the map here while you're talking. The first day is about 66 miles, second day is about 60 miles, um, but both days are over 3,000 feet of climb. And is most of that happening in one shot? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, most of it is uh, climb out and then just, like I said, you can relax and ride downhill. Um, nice. So it's, you know, they're long climbs. They're 20-mile climbs, but it's the grades are always, with the exception of, I think, one climb coming out of Steamboat. And it is a favorite of Ride the Rockies, so you'll love it, mm. um, even if it looks intimidating. It's one that's been done many times on Ride the Rockies. Um, but, and then, you know, the same thing the second day. It's mostly uphill out of the out of the town and then downhill into the town. Wow. Okay. I like that. I like that sort of biking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was day one and two. Yep. Take us to the next day. So the second, the next day where you go to Meeker, Colorado, and Meeker is known as a recreational um, destination. It's on the edge of some of our wildernesses in Colorado. It's got great fly fishing, great fishing. 
Um, again, some really nice hikes. Um, uh, they, uh, it's a small town, a small community. We don't have as many amenities there, but that means that the community is going to get more involved. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we are um, camping at the Rio Blanco Fairgrounds there, so we'll be able to have HQ, venue, showers, everything will be right there for everybody. Um, and the hotels, for those that are staying in hotels, are very close. Um, because it is a small community and we do have some challenges with lodging, we will be running a shuttle back to Craig. So those of you who kind of like the comfort of staying in the same place for two nights, oh, yeah. um, you'll be able to shuttle back to Craig that evening and we will provide the shuttles and then um, we'll shuttle you back early in the morning the next day so you can do your, your next day ride. Um, so, and we'll have more details about that later in the year. But, sure. you know, if you want to keep, if you want to book two nights in Craig, feel free, because we'll take care of you. Okay. Just don't do the random Airbnb where we can't find you. <laughs> okay. So, so day four, I'm pretty excited about, because I think that is what Laura was speaking to as far as the choose your own adventure. So mm -hmm. this day looks fun. And I guess the day before you're, you're biking less than 60 miles. So you may wake up in the morning and be like... I'm gonna go for it today, mm -hmm. or you may be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill out a little bit. So yeah. let's hear it. Yeah. So the the Meeker to Rangeley ride is the perfect setup for day four because the Meeker to Rangeley ride is 58 miles, I think, pretty much all downhill. I think there's one bump in the middle, but if you got your speed going, you won't even notice it. Um, I think that's the day AP and I should ride. Yeah. Right. I, that sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. You could probably even ride with your microphones and interview people as you go. Um, so um, that's just that's a great ride all along the White River, and then you'll get into Rangeley. And what's a treat about this too is it's two days in Rangeley. Um, so we'll be staying at the Colorado Northwestern Community College, and it's a beautiful campus. Everything will be there, including the lodging. I really encourage you to jump online and book your rooms at the in the dorms. I know that sounds a little scary for some of us that remember how dorms used to be. They're not like that anymore. So these dorms don't have bunk beds. They all have twin beds. They all have bathrooms in the rooms. Um, they will happily put you with someone if... Um, if you're traveling alone and you don't want to, you know, spring for the whole room or you can spring for the whole room. But they have about 500 beds there, so they have more wow. than enough um, space for all of us, which would be cool because we'll all be right there together. Yeah. And if, you know, if you do choose, um, if you have chosen to find lodging, the lodging's all really close to So, but that sets us up great for day four. We have a lot of options on day four. It's our first ever gravel day. And um, it's a beautiful ride. It, it goes out, we're gonna start you guys a little early just because gravel is a little more of a challenge, but it goes out on the same route as the rest of the ride for the first 14 miles. And then the rest of the ride turns left, you turn right and jump onto gravel and ride up into the Colorado uh, Dinosaur Monument. We talked at length about Dinosaur National Monument when Pete and Erica were on. So <laughs> we, um, well, we were wondering if there would actually be dinosaurs, but we decided they really are extinct. Yes. But I think it was Pete that said that this is such a beautiful area and that riders are really going to be, like, love this day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, so the gravel day will be a lot of fun that day. It's a fairly long day, um, but it you know again it, you climb up and then you get a bit of a plateau and then you descend so um, it's worth it and then for those that aren't adventurous in riding gravel bikes they are um, that we have two options on the road and it's nice because it's an out and back option and some people think out and back that's boring but trust me in this location when you turn around you're gonna see things you never saw before so when you say it's a shorter route, it's it's shorter than the regular route for the day, but it's not short in miles, is it? No, it's not short in miles. So we have two options that day. We have a short route and a long route. So the shorter route is 84 miles, and um, it goes up to an overlook that is fabulous. And you can turn around at that point and head back, or if you want some adventure, we have a 107-mile option. Mm. So we will have a century option this year. There will be a patch um, for those that want to ride that. 
But if that extra seven miles sounds a little scary, there's any place along that road you can say, oh, I hit my 50 and turn around. Ah, yeah. Um, but then you'll have to come convince us that you rode 100 because the patch <laughs> will be at the turnaround point. So, so really it's a patch for 107 miles. Yes, so, it's okay. a patch for 107 so miles. So that's an extra reward yeah. that you get to do that. I love that you're having riders do that out and back because you don't have to move your luggage that particular, mm-hmm. those two days, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You'll just be able to get up, get on your bike and ride, come back to the Colorado Northwestern Community College where we'll have entertainment and beer. Beer is very important. <laughs> and um, after a pretty tough day, um, depending on which option you choose, you'll be able to just relax and not worry about setting up your tent or finding your tent or, or um, getting shuttled to your hotel. And I'm looking at the elevation map right now, and this is the one that looks the most like a typical Iowa route, because it's <laughs> a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down. But now I'm looking at day five, and this day looks amazing, Yeah. at least on paper. So what's, no. what's that day like? It is amazing. It's... Um, it's a 70 some mile day down to Fruta. Um, and it's our one big climb of the year. Um, and we go, go over Douglas Pass, which has never been gone over on Ride the Rockies oh, cool. before. And that is the thing this year, the, the route from Meeker to Fruta. So all of those days are brand new to Ride the Rockies. We've never done any of those routes before. Um, but Douglas Pass is really cool. It's a more narrow road. Um, it's more classic old Colorado. And um, some of you know Kim, who's been with the event for many, many years, and she was with us when we did all, took all the videos. We got to the top of Douglas Pass, and she screamed, Stop! Oh. And we pulled over, like, What's going on? And she jumped out of the car with her camera and said, In all the years of Ride the Rockies, we've never had a view like this oh, before. Oh, wow. So it's, I think you guys will be surprised. I think all the riders will be very surprised at just how beautiful it is. And then it's just a nice downhill into Fruita. There's also a gravel option that day. And this one is 103 miles. It's a challenge and it takes you over Baxter Pass, which ah. has the same view. So, um, and these roads are good. They're not, it's not single track track t- type trails. These roads are, you know, they're, they're nice wide, nice gravel. 103 miles is a lot, but it's, the roads are good condition. So, um, it will be a lot of fun and it takes you through you know i was back there with limited gas in my car tank and i thought this isn't good (laughs) we are really remote and if we run out of gas or if we have to turn around for some reason we're not going to make it out so you're really remote back there which is going to be really fun because you'll see parts of colorado that most people don't venture into sure sure and i think this entire week you know we're at over 400 miles so this is a a nice good ride for people who love to ride in the mountains but I love that you're offering the adventure for people like you know gravel is such a popular mode of bicycling right now so you've got two gravel days which is cool and I'm somebody um, if I am going to go on a multi-day ride I have my gravel bike set up that I can be on pavement and ride the I could I would bring that bike and ride it the whole week. So that's a, that's awesome. Very awesome. Yeah, no, I, I encourage people to do that. I think that, you know, gravel bikes are so sophisticated now. That's an easy thing to yes. do. You can just, and, you know, we, we will have mechanics on site if you think, oh, there's a little too much tread on these tires. Let me switch out for these days. And then you can go back to your gravel tires um, during the gravel days. So, um, but if you don't want to ride, your gravel bike on the road just join us for the gravel days you know we sure. always have the single day double day option but if you join us for thursday and you join us for friday you gotta stick with us for saturday because <laughs> saturday is colorado okay I mean, let's hear I, about saturday i keep saying that but um so two other times i think two ma- other times during ride the rockies we have taken the ride through the colorado national monument and we get to go through it again this year. And it's, I said, that I think that day is really short, which um, is something that people have wanted so that they can get done early and party with us. But um, in a car, it's really short. It still takes all day because you are stopping constantly to take pictures. Oh. You're stopping constantly to hike out to an overlook and look down into the canyons. You're stopping to look at the Independence yeah. Monument. You're stopping 
So even though it's only 37 miles or around that 39, um, it's going to take a while because, and it's a big climbing day, but it is absolutely beautiful and it'll be the highlight capstone of this event for sure. I shouldn't say that because Dinosaur National Monument is going to get jealous, but those two <laughs> days are amazing. It's time for a training tip. Let's talk about breathing techniques. We breathe in and out about 20,000 times a day. We are powered by breathing. Our lungs fuel us with oxygen, and we all know that that's our body's life-sustaining gas. So when you exercise, breathing allows you to keep moving. I use what is called gear breathing when I'm on the bike, and I'll give you a high-level overview, which may help you with your rides. Gear one means you're inhaling through your nose and also exhaling through your nose. Most of us use gear one breathing when we're taking a leisurely bike ride. Gear two is when you kick it up a notch in your efforts. Gear two means you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. You might use this technique when you are pedaling up a small hill or maybe trying to keep up with a slightly faster rider. Now, gear three is the fight or flight mode. When you're breathing in through your mouth and also exhaling through your mouth, that's gear three. If you've just raced somebody on your bike or you're out of the saddle pumping those legs up a steep hill, your breathing will most likely be gear three. Each of these gears signals your nervous system and affects all kinds of things in your body, including how you burn your fuel. Your goal should always be to stay in gear one as long as you can, and when or if you reach gear three, your goal is to get back to gear two as quickly as possible, and then maybe back to gear one. If you notice you're in gear three all the time, it's, it's just not sustainable or natural, so it'd be in your best interest to slow things down. Through training and practice, you can build up your strength and ability to increase your breathing capabilities without feeling like you're running from a bear every time you ride. There's a lot more science behind the breathing gears. I don't have time to get to it now, but now that you know the basics, take note next time you ride and work on calming your breath. So for now, Take a deep gear one breath, and let's get back to the show. Awesome. I am so excited about this. And where are you at as far as planning? Like, are you guys cruising the route multiple times? Are you still, like, are you still at the point where you're meeting with all the towns, all that good stuff? Yeah, so I've met with all the towns three times so far. Um, and then Laura is going to get to know more of Colorado than she ever thought possible. That's wonderful. Um, Laura and I are headed out in two weeks to introduce her to all the towns and um, really start the operations. So, um, and we will meet with the towns every month um, up until the event. So it's um, now's when the rubber hits the road. Now's when we really make sure that we get all those details taken care of and we're all on the same page. Is registration open now? Yes, yeah. Registration opened the day we made the ride announcement, and um, we encourage everybody, there's so many details on that um, website. We encourage you to go to ridetherockies.com and really look it over. Um, Peter has done a fantastic job, and he's adding stuff all the time. We've got town pages so you can get to know the towns. We've got um, course... Uh, course rudimentary course maps with elevation actually we don't have the detailed day-by-day -day course maps yet but we've got the the overall map on there with mileage and elevation we've got registration details camping details links to um, summit cycling solutions if you want a little bougier event and um, so yeah just check out the website spend some time on there because there are so many details a lot of your questions will get answered and if you can't find your answer you know, hit info at ridetherockies.com and we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Excellent. So ridetherockies.com is the location. June 9th is the date. And thank you so much, Sabra and Laura, for coming on the podcast. I'm guessing we'll have you back on as we get closer or maybe even when AP and I are there helping you out. 
I, I dare I say we'll do a live podcast? I don't know. It depends on if we're riding our bikes or drinking beer or enjoying the entertainment you've set up for us. I think that any of those will work. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Just Go Bike podcast. Murph and AP will be back next week. In the meantime, check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and X, formerly known as Twitter. And if you would like to contact Murph and AP with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, email them at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. Until next time, just go bike! song by Ryan Steer, logo by Suzanne Milosevic, produced by Kathy Murphy, social media by Andrea Parrott, intro by Pumpkin. Until next time, just go bike.